Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the Dropkick Podcast. I am your host, Daniel, and today I have two special guests with me. We got a W veteran and also one half of the Pro and Bro Wrestling Podcast, Darren Young, a.k.a. Fred Rosser. We also have a YouTuber and, of course, the Asian Shane McMahon, who is the other half of the Pro and Bro Wrestling Podcast, Arno Taligarda. But at this time, please help me welcome the Pro and Bro, Fred and Arno. How are you guys doing? What's up, man? Doing great. How about you? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for, for coming on. You know, Arnold and Fred, like, it's always cool talking to you guys, you know, talking wrestling. You know, Arnold's the OG when it comes to social media and being uh, not only a friend, but an incredible mm-hmm. influencer. So he set this all up. And no, uh, sure. I always say, I always say, don't die with the story and you tell it, you know? And you mm-hmm. got to correct, I'm a veteran. So you've done your homework, obviously. <laughs> I, I have i have part of the last time <laughs> but no uh with 2021 just kicking us off a month ago how's everything been like how's it been treating you guys want to go first fred no arnold you're the og okay man I'm, no, I'm, I'm hopeful man last year was mm-hmm. crazy times for a lot of people oh, uh, yeah. but it's also been a great year for a lot of people as well like fred you know his career's mm-hmm. everything um but for me personally uh 2021 you know it it's a new chapter um uh, start mm-hmm. and i'm just i'm here for it man uh like the new justin timberlake song says uh better days ahead right <laughs> great song by the way and now what about you fred well i mean knock on wood there's some wood around me uh you know 2020 i did a off-broadway musical earlier mm-hmm. january february i was embraced in that in new york right when the pandemic hit, you yeah. know, and eventually the musical got picked up by uh, Broadway on demand. So uh, that's been a lot of fun watching that. It was like my first The Alley TV project where a WWE superstar veteran goes headfirst into this off Broadway musical about marriage equality. And uh, it was the best thing I ever done, man. Um, they had me right. singing, dancing. And, um, you know, I hit a home run at the end of the day. So uh, that was my, uh, my, my biggest moment of uh, 2020, uh, along with being with New Japan Pro Wrestling, which was a bucket list of mine. Um, you know, I've had many honors in wrestling, but the biggest honor for 2020 is having match of the year for New Japan Strong. So Absolutely. Um, that's been... Uh, <laughs> That's been, I'm still on cloud nine for getting that recognition. So I think once everything gets a little bit better and uh, they will, because we have to just keep speaking it into existence, uh, eventually I can go out to Japan and perform. No, hundred percent. Is that gig with Broadway still, you know, are you still gonna, you know, pursue it in 2021? Well, I mean, if it, gets picked up for season two i would love to do it again have some kind of role in it but i would do it again in a heartbeat but i can't really worry about that i gotta worry about the new japan pro wrestling stuff so you know not being with yeah not being with wwe uh, you gotta grind a little bit more you know you gotta make connections yourself personally i was talking to arnold you know uh sometimes you can have people talk for you but sometimes i have to like kind of be that influencer to say how serious i am about partnering with a bidet company you know what i mean if you know what a bidet yeah. company is you know uh mm-hmm. it's something that like um we gotta hustle on social media and we gotta save the environment you know and that's yeah. that's my way of promoting like the environment you know you get yourself a bidet you don't have to worry about people stealing tall people like arnold <laughs> <laughs> no absolutely but you talked about you know wrestling in japan and everybody but uh, is there someone you haven't faced yet that you'd like to face uh well i've been calling kenny omega out i've been okay. calling him okay. out in a way where he's doing great things with aew he's doing mm-hmm. great things with um impact but if he comes yeah. to new japan pro wrestling if he comes to new japan strong i'm coming for him so i made it crystal clear on my podcast and i'm making it crystal clear with you too all right 
that would be great you know you're a stiff wrestler but like you're really good at what you do same with kenny omega like i think both of these styles going head to head great match. well well you talked about um new japan uh i was talking about kenny omega but with new japan uh i'm constantly talking with tanahashi on social media in the dm like just as much as he's a fan of uh me i'm a fan of him so that's uh, great tanahashi uh abushi um just being in contact with these guys uh rooting for me to come out to japan means the world to me you know if i was close to you like i was to arnold i would show you the dms and all that stuff because <laughs> nothing n nothing crazy but like that's the kind mm -hmm. of connection that arnold and i have you know no 100 i think it's great you know what i mean but um speaking of promotions recently uh last summer actually wade barrett joined uh the commentators booth at nxt and he's killing it every wednesday of course but will we see Darren Young return in 2021 to the WWE and follow in steps away Barrett? Yeah, well, most likely uh, WrestleMania in Tampa, again, with the crowd, uh, we're going to come back uh, the Nexus, uh, him being on commentary, and that he's going to rise up from the table, and uh, we're going to show up, and we're going to uh, defeat Retribution. So uh, I'm letting you guys know that right now. I shouldn't have dropped the news, but oops. But yeah, it'll be fun. Oh shit! I don't know, man. I don't know because I remember the last time you said that on our podcast, and I remember like it, like it picked up just like that. So I don't know. Nexus Retribution. I'm with it. I'm with it. But no, uh, taking a step into the past, what captivated you both about the you know professional wrestling and its art? Like, what you know drew you to as fans? um for me man i was watching it when i was like a little kid in indonesia didn't know how to speak english at the time we only had mm -hmm. oh no yeah i i stole your line remember i've been watching i've been watching wrestling since i came out my mom's <laughs> womb <laughs> yeah no but it's true man it's kind of basically true because um again we only had like five channels it's either the new simpsons so i was like used to that and then i saw pro wrestling on and um i always refer back to the story but it's like I think it was WCW Saturday Night Live, uh, Saturday, um, Saturday Night, and um, I think I saw Alex Wright do a sunset flip. I'm like, I'm like, wait, what is that? What am I seeing? Mm -hmm. It's not an action movie. They're doing it in real time. I feel like, like I was like so blown away by the move. I was like hooked on, I hooked on it. That day. I think I was like, that time, and then I saw Shawn Michaels on commentary and like you know um, him, mm -hmm. and I think was my fandom my fandom for Shawn michaels that made me start watching wrestling because he was so cool like mm -hmm. like him so um ever since then man like i never grew out of it like even like my family members like when they haven't seen me in a really long time they're like are you still into wrestling i'm like yeah actually oh, yeah. <laughs> i'm like good friends with a wrestler and we have a wrestling podcast <laughs> <laughs> No, absolutely. I think things work out sometimes the way you don't expect it to. You know what I mean? Like, you never knew, like, you'd meet Fred at this, like, time and, like, how you guys would connect. Because you guys, like, sometimes you guys come off, like, family. Like, I don't know if someone's told you that, but, like, the connection that you guys have together, like, it's it's really genuine. It's really cool to see. But, no, what about you, Fred? How did you, you know, get drawn into wrestling? Uh, again, since I came out my mom's womb, November 2nd, I was <laughs> great um but i was uh, intrigued by the larger than life characters hulk hogan body slamming andre the giant you know i'm 37 years old but you know i made my 20s jealous of my 30s so you know it was something that i've always wanted to do um so you know watching guys like i'm not going to even name my faves i'm going to name guys like mr perfect jake the snake brad armstrong you know they had me believe they they had me hooked on the product and it, 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 it was something i wanted to do you know with, and with mm -hmm. laser like focus i pursued it no no absolutely i think back then the characters were so much bigger than 
the in-ring action. Like I was watching um Savage matches back on the network and stuff. I was watching uh, Ultimate Warrior and stuff, and there wasn't any crazy flips or anything. Like we saw one dive outside the ring, and that was it. And it wasn't even like a tope. It was just off the turnbuckle. But you know, I think with today's generation, I feel like there's too much wrestling. You know? There's too much. We're spoiled with too much. Like now we have Impact, AEW, New Japan, Japan Strong, NWA. Do you feel as if that we're too spoiled? Like, how? You, what's your take on that? You know, for me personally, I think the more the better. Uh, there's mm -hmm. more opportunity for, uh, you know, you to like your favorites and not like mm -hmm. your favorites. Um, you know, I, I never want fans to get, uh, you, know, you know, torn between a brand, you know, uh, watch it all. For me, being in the business, I like to stay in my lane. It's just New Japan, New Japan. Like sometimes Arnold will give me the 411 on what's going on with WWE or Impact. And I'll see the headlines on social media. That's how I find out what's going on. But I don't really watch a full show. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's in front of me, I'll watch it. You know, if Arnold has it on, I'm going to watch it. I'm not going to, you know. Uh, crap on it, but I just try to stay in my own lane, just like Kenny Omega should stay in his own lane. I'm going to stay in my own lane with New Japan Strong. And I also no, think that wrestling represents how society is. You know, back in the day, uh, mm -hmm. like in the 80s, it was all about comic books, real, um, you know, like huge characters. And that's how, and that's what the World Wrestling Federation was. Back in the late 90s, it was all about Jerry Springer, South Park, um, you know, mm -hmm. that's how was of course we got the attitude era now the modern days you know we have so many choices with hulu netflix like peacock like we just we're spoiled one. <laughs> so wrestling is adapting to that as well so i feel like whatever happening with whatever is happening with wrestling is whatever happening in society no that's actually a great like way to look I, i've never looked at it that way so that's a great perspective and like i totally agree like you know absolutely but um has there ever been a time that you guys fell out of wrestling because i know as fans we go through that sometimes we're like you know i can't i can't watch it weekly but sometimes we just you know what i mean yes um for me it didn't last i mean it's not like i didn't fell out of it but it was, mm -hmm. it was like the product I'm, I'm not really loving the product as much as i used to but i would have mm -hmm. this would be early 2000 um which is kind of weird because that's when all the heavy hitters john cena randy orton batista yeah. was happening but you know coming from the attitude era like all my favorites were gone like the rock left austin left and now like we're being introduced to all these new wrestlers that new fans are automatically in love with but at the time um old fans like myself were like well where are my guys you know like, <laughs> um so no, i fell out of it I still watched it weekly, but I was just like, uh, it took me a while to be fully invested in the wrestlers at the time. No, oh, I agree. Absolutely. What about you, Fred? Never? Ne never. Never. Damn. Never fell out of it. I did the backyard wrestling, uh, 10th grade, 11th grade. I I've got footage that I want to throw back. I'm going to eventually throw back. I'm going to splice it together with some backyard wrestling and then have it fade into like current stuff and then back yeah. to the backyard wrestling. Like, you know, I'm sure, you know, the Hardys have stuff like that. But yeah, I was, uh, like I said earlier, laser like focus, something I wanted to do. So um, I, I, uh, I never, I never fell out of it. Never fell out of it. Mm -hmm. That's great, man. I think having the connection so strong with something you love, like you're going to make it at some point. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter like how long it takes, but at some point you're going to reach that finish line. You're going to be like, yo, I made it. So, you know, no, I don't... we're not, well, uh, uh, we're not wired. Oh, uh, what, what was that, Arnold? I was just going to say, I, I, I told Fred this before, but I don't have a lot of regrets as a kid, but my biggest regret is not having Fred as a friend. <laughs> For like 10, 11 years old, because Arnold, don't start, don't start, <laughs> man. We have don't so start. much, man. I don't know if you know, but we're both like only, only child. Um, you know, all we're we basically have like the same personality, all the things that annoy us, um, are mm -hmm. happy that. And um, I, I didn't really have too many friends that like watch wrestling as much as I did growing up. So, man, if like me and Fred knew each other, um. Mm. When you were like 10, oh my god, like you think our friendship is like at a great level. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> hey man, that's just the beast of it, right? right now, man. It's it's great to see, you know, how you guys like work together, like on your podcasting, because you have great chemistry. Like I said, you guys are like family. Like that's what it seems like. You know what I mean? But talk to me about how the pro met the bro. Like how did that come together? Because I hear different stories all the time. Like I never asked Fred this, but I asked Arnold. I think when we had him on, like back in last May, I believe. Oh, how Arnold and I met, both stories will be identical because, uh, you know, we might tell it differently, but they're identical. Uh, me, you know, moving to LA, I'm a private person. And, uh, you know, one day uh, I was outside and uh, all I heard was, oh my God, no way. Like, Oh my God, like Darren Young. I said, hey man, how you doing? And then I'm a private person. I said, man, now this fan knows where I live now. And like, oh my God. And he was walking, yeah. his, he was walking his dog, Junior. And then, um, you know, fast forward to um, us doing what we're doing, you know. Uh, he got a picture with me. And uh, I, I, he said that, oh, my my wife heart lives you know uh not not too far from me and mm -hmm. uh you know i have a thing for asians so uh that that kind of broke my spirits you know because I was like, oh man you know handsome asian you know and then <laughs> this is literally my bro i don't ever ever look at him like that again there's two mm -hmm. people i don't look at my best friend trouble in yonkers new york and arnold i i, I never look at that and I, I never yeah. look at them like that anymore but you know, uh, I think we looked each other up or something, and uh, he's a social media influencer, and he's uh, uh, he's a fan of the business where he's not disrespectful. You know, that's there's one thing where you can, um, you know, especially when I'm in the business. Uh, mm -hmm. Arnold has always been respectful of the business. He has his opinion. I have my opinion, but um, for me, doing this podcast with him it's uh therapeutic for me because if i would have if i would have worried so much about the numbers i would have stopped a long time ago i do this because it's like therapy and you know i compare our relationship to uh, uh bruce pritchard who had his podcast and uh i think arnold could tell the story better but our, the stories are parallel i think by me doing the podcast, you know, maybe the opportunity with New Japan came up from that, you know, or anything, you know, anything, just yeah. me just getting, get my voice out and having fun, you know, because at the, end, at the end of the day, this is therapy for me. This is fun. This is practice for me talking, you know, being able to be a better storyteller. We can all, all get better, you know, but when I'm vibing with Arnold and just putting it out there to the world, uh, it's therapeutic. No, absolutely. I agree. But like it's it's sorry to cut you off. What? No, I was just gonna say like it's pretty cool. Like uh, Fred told it really well. But like from my side, like like a kid at a candy store, you know, because like like a fan, like it just so happens mm -hmm. dog. I rarely walk my dog at the time, and it felt like someone like copied and pasted Darren Young like to the street. Because <laughs> <laughs> like because you know like I'm not putting him over because here you know, I told him like many times before like how you how you see him on TV looks like in real life like he stands out he's like he's not like a normal like everyday like citizen that just like walks by like he's no. like yeah like, oh God, like darren young and, and like it was so cool because yes like we had like wrestling in common and all that but uh, the first time we hung out we like really connected and like really yeah level and we were into like things like with music and like r b and like how we how we see life and how we yeah beat other people so mm -hmm. uh, so and you know uh we we would talk wrestling like we, we would hang out and we talk wrestling at this one and this one time we were at a, um fred's like favorite spot like house and we were there from like man like 9 a.m maybe or like maybe noon and then we left at 8 p.m and the whole time we were just like talking wrestling yeah. like we were talking psychology we we're talking like stuff from New <laughs> back in the day and we're like let's just Press record, man. Like if yeah. <laughs> for us, you know. So mm -hmm. you, know, like, I agree. you know, like you know, for example, uh Arnold's always respectful about the business. He has his way of thinking. I have my way of thinking. Uh me and my 
uh, business partner with Headquarters Clothing, uh, Pedro, the owner, uh, I can publicly say this because it just drives me crazy. We always butt heads because, you know, he, he, he's very close to me. Uh, Arnold's a little bit closer, but he's close to me. But he'll always say, oh, uh, have you watched WWE? Oh, no, I haven't watched it. Yeah, I haven't watched it either. I don't like it, you know? I mean, <laughs> have your opinion my the first wrestler i've ever met was louis spicoli so if you look back and like if you know who he is do you know who he is uh no well louis spicoli was an opening match type of guy you know mm-hmm. he wasn't a main eventer but he was the first wrestler i ever met so i was mesmerized so i don't care yeah. if you're i don't care if you're rock or i don't care if you're uh mikey whipwreck you know <laughs> i still treat you with respect What's so no, funny, huh? The comparison's funny, man. <laughs> I, hey, you got to think on the fly, man. You got to think on the fly. Mr. No Days Off, absolutely. But no, um, this is a question for Arno. Like, I know Fred calls you uh, the Asian Shane McMahon. And, like, if you can wrestle Fred in one match, what stipulation would you pick? Just, oh just out of curiosity. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, man. Um, Iron Man match with one hand tied behind his back. That's smart. That's smart. I like that. <laughs> you know, uh, 19, uh, 19 years for me wrestling in September. Uh, first starting off, I would have been like, no, that's impossible. That's possible. That's no, possible. anything's possible in the wrestling world. We're, make, we're making movies. We're telling stories. We're just having you on the edge of your seat, you know? So uh, we could definitely make it work. No, absolutely. But no, I did want to ask, you know, you guys starting a podcast and you guys have the, you know, names such as like Chris Van Lee, Tyson Kidd, PJ Black, but like the list goes on and on. Like I remember the first interview I watched of, you know, you guys conducting was the David Benoit one. And I liked how you guys just set that up and it felt like a conversation. It didn't really feel like an interview. That makes sense. But like out of all the names that I just mentioned and like, you know, the ones that you guys have, um which interview was your favorite to do oh i have one already in the back of my head um oh, yeah. to be yeah. the god the god because <laughs> he was man it was just like talking to your uncle I haven't seen mm-hmm. him in a really long time he was all smiles throughout the whole thing and mm-hmm. what was cool about his uh podcast interview it was the fact that he was asking us questions like he's like <laughs> what, what? Do you think there's a chance that the WWE would put the nation? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like legit conversation. That was mm-hmm. cool. That was my favorite. No, absolutely. What about you, Fred? Well, all of them are my favorites. And uh, like when Arnold and I started doing this, we, we we didn't talk about having guests. We just talked about talking about wrestling. And mm-hmm. then uh, usually, well, always any guest that we've had on is kind of near and dear to my heart and I have some kind of story. It's not any kind of fish out of water uh, with any guests. You know, I've ha- I have some kind of connection. And if we have a guest, we have a guest. If we don't, uh, we're, we're at the point and I'm saying it with my chest out that, you know, we can cover an hour of wrestling. Before I would always be nervous. Uh, oh man, we're not gonna have enough to talk about. But just in real life, you know, we can go on hours, hours, you know, uh, mm-hmm. After we're done filming our podcast, uh, we can keep going, but I got to eat because, you know, <laughs> I do the intimate fasting. So my first meal uh, with a podcast is like eight, you know, mm-hmm. so I'm starving. So I don't get antsy like Arnold, but I have to like, you know, eat. We, we can no. go on and on. So That's when you know. No, absolutely. No, but um, if you could interview anybody on the Pro and Roll Wrestling podcast, who would it be? Oh, say that again. I'm sorry. I just, I just dazed out. No, if you could interview anybody on your guys' podcast, like who would it be? A new guest? Yeah. Uh, you know, like that's a tough question because it just like whatever <laughs> comes, whatever comes to me. You know, like uh-huh. uh, I wanted to interview this one girl after we're done here, but she's gonna be, she's gonna be quitting. Uh, She's going to be quit, like she's going to be leaving. So uh, I rather, so I just thought of this idea of doing like a 
HBO type setting where the wrestling ring is in the background and they're actually doing their practice matches, but doing our podcast, you know, so we can get kind of the insight and who knows it's a first for us. And I don't think it's ever been done. Um, we'll see who has, we'll see who follows that, you know? Absolutely. What about you, Arnold? Who's, who's your uh, dream guest? <laughs> Well, I don't know how the conversation would go, but like I, I would have to say Shawn Michaels, of course. Oh, absolutely, yeah. My mm-hmm. own I had a person during a meeting, and mm-hmm. uh, that was just like bucket list for me because it was like, man, who do I want to like meet in life? Bruno Mars, Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I met two of them. I can't meet obviously. I can't meet Michael Jackson anymore. So that was definitely good enough for me, but. That'd be really awesome if we, you know, if we talk to Shawn Michaels, because I, I have so many like information that I know about him, like even like little min, minuscule ones, you know, because I've been a fan for such mm-hmm. a long. time. You know the guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. But where do you rank him in your top ten, though? That's pretty, yeah. Oh, dude, one. One, okay. <laughs> I agree. You know, I agree. you know, it's funny. Like I never. Um, uh, I don't know if I've ever said this before. Uh, I probably I probably told Arnold, but you know I was at a show in Jersey, ninety four, nineteen ninety four. Sean Michaels uh, had walked past me like in the crowd, and he had this like that he had this smell about him. It, it smelled like really good, you know. So mm-hmm. years later, just like wrestling and just in general, uh, I always spray a lot of cologne on. Uh, before my matches, uh, unusual amount of cologne, you know, because mm-hmm. every time I walk out the curtain or if I'm getting beat up, I can hear a fan or two or whoever say, oh, he smells good. So <laughs> me, like, seeing Shawn Michaels and having after his match and walking by and just mm-hmm. getting, like, the smell of, man, he smells good after a match, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. That's always been in my head, and uh, I got sent home twice as a kid for spraying my dad's cologne and oh my, you know, my, my, my mom was not happy you know my mom was not happy. she had to leave work and pick me up so oh, um, no. i always love scents so that's something i mm-hmm. do before matches like not really sprays but if i do ever spray i'll spray or some oil man and i always get i always can hear the fans i know absolutely but i did i did want to talk about uh the royal rumble like who are your guys predictions though because that's what this sunday i believe so yep. i'm gonna let arnold go first and we'll go with Fred. you know um rumors has it that they're really building up to daniel bryan and roman reigns for mania mm-hmm. so i think daniel bryan's gonna win the royal rumble because we never had that daniel bryan royal rumble moment you know that's true that's true a rumble um i remember Fans were pissed when he got eliminated um, after um, WrestleMania, WrestleMania 31. He got eliminated. Uh, people were pissed about that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like people are not tired of Daniel Bryan, you know? Like, they they haven't had enough of him. And they've just been um, – I feel like WWE is doing their best to preserve him for big moments like this. Mm-hmm. The fans aren't sick of it anymore. So, yeah. I Daniel Bryan, man. What are you, Fred? Uh, I I think Arnold asked me this. I think I just say Keith Lee. Like I I don't see what's going on, but I just say, uh, if I was the Black Vincent man, I would say Keith Lee. Mm-hmm. No, I think Keith Lee and Daniel Bryan great picks, and I think Jay White's like rumored to be there in something later. You know who else? Who? Who else? Wait, cut out who? Marty Scroll. Oh, Marty Scroll's supposed to be there. No way. Damn. I don't know. I don't know how that would play out, but like, you know, anything's possible in the WWE. Well, I, ju- well, I just seen him recently, so huh. But we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. No, we'll see. No, I, I, I I literally just saw him recently. Um That's so great. damn. Hmm. Well, we'll see. That'd be great. No, but I think uh, Tessa Blanchard is also rumored or something, and like she's been like denying interviews from like everybody. You know, she's trying to say hello, but I don't know again. Yeah, mm. and we're coming back just for like a one-time appearance for um backstage again with WWE on Fox. Which yeah, yeah, that? I saw that. Renee. Oh, she's coming back, and she's pregnant, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's coming back. Uh, I don't know if it's like long term, but it might be just a one-off. 
for backstage. Wow. I think that's, cool. Cool. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think, you know, with the product right now, like things are finally going to shape up and stuff. Like I think, you know, uh, NXT is killing it with like Finn Balor and Disputed Era. But like Fred, I did want to ask, with all the talent in NXT right now, did you like have a specific name you wanted to work with or like some guy on the main roster? Like who are you like laser focused on? You'd be like, that's the guy I want to work with if I ever came back. Oh, if I ever came back, yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, well, you know, you know, I just can't go uh, just being a guy that, that does five minute matches. You know, uh, mm-hmm. you have to just know your worth. You know, know yourself and know your worth. So, you know, my mindset is totally New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, uh, for me to go back there, I would have to get in the ring with guys like Finn Balor uh velvet dream uh jake atlas you know um really at this point in my career i want to be able to help elevate talent but uh yeah i'm gonna make sure i get my stuff in and uh i'm doing just that with new japan no absolutely i agree but i did want to ask one final question what are some of your future goals for both of you and what do you hope to accomplish by the end of 2021 <laughs> I'm gonna go first, Red. No, you're the OJ. <laughs> um, um, you know, I've always never been like a goal-oriented person. I've, I've always been day by day. Some people might find that you know negative. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm an easygoing guy. I work hard every day, but I've never like full on like set specific goals. But uh, this year, uh, I'm really excited for like a project that I'm launching hopefully uh next week uh oh, no yeah something that i've been like working on so it's it's definitely a passion project that i've wanted to do for a year now like, especially how, how 2020 was i really wanted to do it mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's happening man so hopefully i can make that announcement no man congratulations i hope you know everything goes well and like let me know i'll promote it and stuff <laughs> no absolutely what about you fred for me, you know, 2021, I just want to be able to travel to Japan, you know. You know, my mindset, I'm like wired a little bit differently, you know. I can kind of toot my own horn that I, out of us, you know, I'm the one that is laser-like focus on still performing in the ring. Uh, yeah, I just want to be able to travel out to uh, Japan, you know. So eventually when they able to... Uh, renew uh, the entertainment visas, you know, then I can go out there. So that's just my goal and just keep grinding on my social media. I always say my social media is an open diary to the world and anything I ever post, it always comes from the heart with the intent to inspire, motivate and uh, educate the masses, you know, so just like with the bidet, just like with the bidet company, if I can, uh, you know, influence the masses to, you know, help the environment get a bidet then so be it so you know mm-hmm. social media is a second job so i want to keep grinding on that keep grinding with the wrestling and uh keep moving forward like i said earlier i'm making my 20s jealous of my 30s so i gotta keep grinding <laughs> away I, I can't play forever you know i got about 12 more years left of wrestling and then i'm uh retiring absolutely man you've done it like you killed in the wrestling business you know i mean you wrestled the likes of like so many and you know i hope you kill it in japan and and i hope things go well with you in tampa once you know wrestlemania comes here and whatnot but no thank you guys so much for doing this but where can we find arnold and fred on social media uh you can find us at pro and bro wrestling on instagram and on youtube and uh a a telegarda for my instagram my name on YouTube. Absolutely. And you know, Arnold and I are the roughest, toughest, most entertaining tag team podcast duo. So he just gave us a 411 on our podcast. For me, my Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fred Rosser, my government name, not down young, at Real Fred Rosser. Uh, follow my Block the Hate movement, hashtag Block the Hate, that's running wild, maybe in a city near you. So uh thank you for having me buddy no man absolutely i just want to thank you guys you know for taking the time and doing this but uh, everyone go check the pro and bro wrestling podcast link will be in the description but as of right now 
take it easy. Appreciate it.